Hey folks, how you doing? Captain Mark here, the kid, Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. This episode is exciting. But what's more exciting? That right there. The preacher is back from Island Yacht Sales, New York. All right, what they do, they did a lot. All right, they hooked us up with the new Simrad systems. We got the new GS25 on there, the new Simrad 12 inch screen. Man, I got awful small on that preacher. They did a lot of stuff, they detail it. So if you guys need anything, you guys want to sell a boat, Club Soda Kenny just sold his boat in three days with those guys. Colin over there moved that boat beautifully. I mean, it was just just true professionals over there, all right? But if you're looking to buy a boat, you're looking to jump into the Everglades family, which I highly recommend, all right? I've been running boats my whole life. This is by far the sickest boat I've ever owned. The Everglades, there's nothing like them out there. This episode, it's a little how-to from our friends over at Pelagic Outfitters in Lindenhurst. All right, you guys know, if you guys have been watching the channel, I've been chasing these big tuna for a year now. And my success is totally related to people who show me how to do it, all right? But on that note, I knew we needed to improve a little bit on our gear, all right? First year we went out and legit, no BS, we were using Amazon rods and the old Squall 50s. We fished on a budget, but we got a lot of fish. So what happened is we, we started targeting those giants and we did very well with them. However, we didn't have the gear to do it, all right? We didn't have the right rods and stuff like that. So who do you go for the right rod? You go over and see Chris over at Pelagic Outfitters, all right? He makes custom rods like nobody else can. So we stopped in and saw Chris and said, hey Chris, this is what we're doing. We're doing the giant fishery. We need rods to do it. I need two custom rods. Tell me what you think. I know nothing about making rods for giant fish. I'm an inshore captain, and this is kind of new to me. Chris went out and made two custom rods for us. You'll see them in the end of this video. Absolute works of art. We're using 70 pens, which is big enough for these giants. Trust me, because I've done it. I mean, I got, I, we did four giants last year. We're using 70 international silvers with 130 hollow core and a 130 top shot. So there's a wind-on leader that goes from the hollow core to the mono shock leader. And uh, bro, you need three college credits just to learn how to do it. So what am I gonna do? I asked Chris if he can help out the con and do a how-to video on how to do that wind-on. I think we really did a good job filming it and Chris explaining how to do it. All right, so let me introduce Chris and we'll start that right now. Chris from Pelagic Gaffers, we're gonna start off with a direct insertion. We're gonna take 130 pound monofilament and it's started directly into 130 pound hollow core spectra. Requires a hollow core needle. The monofilament is gonna slide in the back of the hollow core needle. And we're gonna take the tip of this needle and insert it inside the hollow core itself. For Mark, we're doing 130 pound monofilament into 130 pound hollow core spectra. So the needle is started and we're taking this hollow core spectra and we're pulling it on the needle. All right, we're gonna bunch it up a couple inches at a time, pull it back. We're gonna load it on the needle, we're gonna pull it back. This insertion is gonna be about three feet. Slow process. You can see I'm actually pulling the hollow core on the needle, I'm not pushing the needle into the hollow core. This hollow core material is a 16 carrier, which means it's made up of 16 strands, which are weaved together, which leave a center space, which we're inserting this product into. So this is the product. It's made by Diamond Braid, distributed by Highliner. It's 130 pound hollow core spectra. So I'm continuing with the insertion. You can see I've got about two feet of material working. I'm gonna keep pulling it on until I'm in about three feet. So now I've got my insertion about three feet. I'm gonna take the needle and we're just gonna exit, pull the monofilament out from the hollow core needle itself. I'm gonna give the end a little clip. I'm gonna pull this out about two feet. I'm gonna put a little tooth on this monofilament for a little extra protection, a little 220 sandpaper. Give it a couple rips. Hmm. You can see it gives a little texture to there. Just a little extra grip. Now we're gonna take this tag and the mono, we're gonna bury it back in the hollow core. You see, we're almost there. I'm gonna pull it back in about another inch. And that's buried. You can, so you can see the hollow core spectra, and then you can see where the mono comes and begins and then it runs back about three foot and there's your exit point. This exit point needs to be secured. We're gonna secure it with a serve. Set it up in a brace. Okay. 
we're going to give a little stretch on this. By stretching this mono, you can see it actually moving a little bit, right? By stretching this here, what we're doing is putting this under tension. We're actually making the monofil monofilament a little narrower because when we're stretching it, the diameter is going to change a little bit, right? Important process, part of the process. Serving bobbin, 30 pound spectra, it's a solid product. Now it's solid core, hollow core. This solid core is a four carrier, made up of four strands, doesn't create a center, so it's not spliceable. The 130 again is a 16 carrier, develops a center, so it is spliceable. I'm gonna take the serving bobbin, we're gonna start about an inch and a quarter up. Pinched with my finger, index finger and thumb. I'm going to start over my tag end, give about 10 wraps on it. I'm going to give a little tension there. Give a little trim. All right, so I've worked my bobbin, serving bobbin right, right up tight now, and now we're going to spin this by hand. And I'll give it a little turn, and we're going to work this. You can see it working down towards the exit point. You can see I got about a quarter inch of material left there showing that's not served over. I like to stop at that point and roll it by hand. Important part of my process here, I'm going to serve till the exit point and then give like two shots past it. I'm not serving out onto my mono. Give a little tension on there, bring it back. I just pulled the serving bobbin to the left. Now I'm going to wrap up back that way. Give a couple spins by hand. So now I've worked my serve back up to, to where I've started. I've stopped about a quarter inch from where, I've, where I initially started. A little difficult to see, but you can kind of get a nice can see it there. So that's where the serve, it, serve stands right now and that's where it ends. So I'm about a quarter inch away. Take a piece of number five wire and I'm gonna wrap over the wire. Stopping. Now what, why, why are you putting, I didn't even know there's wire in this. Wire in this freaking thing? This is, this is just to finish the loop on it. It's very, very similar to building a, a fishing rod. We don't use the wire in a fishing rod, we just use, use a piece of the, the rod winding thread and you'll see it right now. So I have to finish this somehow and I'm not going to tie knots because knots are going to get bulky and can come undone. Is the wire going to be taken out? The, wires will, the wire will be taken out and you're okay. going to see it right I now. So, 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 I've, so I've wrapped over the wire about 10 or 11 wraps, okay? So now I'm gonna pull it down, I'm pinching it. Essentially, I'm just holding this with my left hand. All right, I'm gonna open this wire, wire loop up. I'm gonna take my tag end of my serve. So I just pulled the wire out and now ultimately pulled the 30 pound spectra back over itself. Okay. And you can probably see that. Yeah. You can see it in there. You can see that in there? Okay. So, oh, yeah, okay. so I've pulled my I pulled my spectra through back on itself. You can see there's about 10 wraps over that. Now I want to tighten this up. I'm going to wrap it back on itself. Give a little snug turn, a little pull. Another little pull. Now I'm going to cut this tag end off. And I'm going to cut it off flush. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull to my left, which opens up my serve a slight, slight little bit. Cuts that off there. Use the back end of my razor blade to burnish. Still not done. We're close. Now what we do is a serving glue. This is a very, very, very thin product that actually soaks through the fibers into the hollow core and also around the monofilament. Give it a quick wipe. 
We're almost done now. A little bowstring wax. That's come get this freaking up. That's your finished product. Alright. That's your serve. Finishes off about an inch and a half long. Monofil this is monofilament going into your hollow core, about three foot. Ultimately now, the harder you pull this, the tighter this hollow core is gonna close around the monofilament, like a Chinese finger, right? right? The weakness to that is, if I didn't serve this end here, if you slid this free, it slides right off. So this keeps tension on the whole system as you pull. If this was to come free or not be served properly, this whole mono could, could find its way out. So we build our top shots and wind-ons here. Everything happens in the store. This happens to have a loop on the end, which is not a direct insertion, but this goes uh, can go on your 30s, 50s, even your 70s uh, loop-to-loop -loop connection where rather than that direct insertion, we would create a loop at the end of the Spectra, and this already has a loop built on it. I'll show you this real quick. So what we're doing is we're taking, this is a 50 yards of 100 pound uh, Mamoy high catch smoke blue. We put 50 yards on that spool and then we serve a, we splice and serve a three foot section of hollow core on there again. So same, same serve. Okay. All right. And that hollow core goes to the other hollow core? And we splice a loop on it that's got a loop there and then you could go loop to loop connections which this enables you to swap this out on the boat very very easily it's a cat cat's paw connection it takes about 20 seconds to get this spliced on uh connection done and on the reel it's on the rod the reel itself they're for sale here any size you need all right chris thanks so much for that detail instruction how to do the uh wind on leader right there you guys obviously i know i don't have the skill set to do so so i don't pretend to do it. that's why i go to the pros i think Chris can do that stuff blindfold. He's done thousands of these wind-ons, and I know not to do it, all right? This is something that you don't want to fail. You don't want to try it yourself and not know what you're doing until you really watch this video and really hone in on what he does, all right? There's a lot of moving parts to this freaking thing, and I'm not involved with it. I'm small enough to say, hey, Chris, here's my 70. Can you do me a favor? Give me a 130 top shot on that freaking thing, all right? All those moves, not happening. I think it's got more moves than a Rolex watch. We're also going to do a video how to mount the reel on a North Shore rod. You think it's simple, right? You think, all right, maybe that's, uh, you know, you put it in, you tighten it down. Nah, that's what I thought. It's a lot more involved than that. And Chris is going to show you a couple of tricks how to do so. I learned, all right? So if I learned, I think I could put it out to the con. Again, these videos here are for new jacks. I mean, these aren't for seasoned tuna guys. But these are guys who want to dabble in. Hey, do I want to tr try to do my own wind-on leader? Go for it, bro. Learning's everything as far as I'm concerned. It's just that, do I have the instruments to do stuff? I don't have that. He says, you know, you put all that stuff together and, you know, you got to spend a couple of shekels to do that. It's a lot easier for me to go drop my 70s over and say, Chris, do me a solid. Shoot me up with some top shot here and put the wind on. I'm not doing it. I just, I, you got to know your shortcomings, all right? But again, thanks to Chris for all that stuff. If you guys need anything in the offshore market, make sure you give those guys a holler over a pelagic outfit is right there. These guys are the top of the food chain. My big boy, Jay. He's on there, this guy knows his stuff. And as you get out of line, he'll smack you so hard you'll wake up next Tuesday, all right? That guy's a monster, all right? So that's it, pledge your cow for this. Keep an eye on him. You guys need anything in the offshore business. You want custom rods made by legit, talented, crazy rod makers. These guys are the top of the food chain when it comes to making rods. My two freaking pelagics, they are literally works of art. Pen yeah, 70s built on a six foot two seeker 59 triple X blank. It's rated 80 to 130. This rod can handle over 70 pounds of drag, which is not what we're doing. We put it on a number four AFCO cur short curved butt because you wanted to have the ability to stand up if he wasn't fishing for giants. This also enables you to put it in a belt and fight it stand up style, or you can drop it in a rod holder and turn the handle on these much, much bigger fish. Uh, rods are built here. Winthrop Excalibur guide set, Hypalon foregrips. I like the Hypalon better. They're a little softer, more comfortable, and much more durable than the EVA foam. EVA, once you ding it, it takes a set. This stuff 
got a little sponginess to it. It doesn't take a set. It's very, very durable and very comfortable. We have 130 pound hollow core on the back. There's 650 yards underneath this monofilament. And then there's another 200 yards, 130 pound Momoi high catch monofilament on here. Direct splice like we just showed you. So Mark got a pair of these. Uh, Mark also has a bunch of, I mean, we'll call it entry level gear uh, for those yellow birds, smaller schooly bluefin, uh, if going to go to Canyon, uh, longfin. Not that they couldn't handle bigger fish, but they're really not built for day in and day out high drag pressure, which is a Squall 50 VSW. And we did a stock rod from Okuma. It's an Okuma Makaira, uh, which we customized as well with just putting his Preacher logo on there. It's got some abalone on there. Uh, they use Alps guide sets, which clearances are big enough still to pull knots through and some swivels. And that's that squall 50. Uh, great little reel, not little, but it's a 50 wide, so it's not small by any stretch. Uh, good to 25 pounds of drag every day of the week. You can't push these reels up uh, much past that because it is a composite frame. The weakness of the composite frame is under high pressures you will get some twisting and, 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 and uh, movement in this frame, which can cause misalignment in the gears. And then that's how you blow this stuff up over time. So if you're just getting into the game, recreational, gonna fish eight, 10, 12 times a year, uh, and just wanna touch on it, uh, you can go this direction. They're fantastic. It's a fantastic product for not a tremendous amount of money. Uh, so for a, a legitimate offshore package, uh, you know, well under a grand, uh, you cannot go wrong with this and it'll serve you well for many years to come. So that being said, whatever you need here, inshore and offshore, come on in, talk to me or one of the guys here. We build the custom rods in-house, uh, obviously top shots and wind-ons, we build them here. All of our bars, chains, everything happens here in-house. Nothing is outside of this facility. If you want to call us here, 631-225-TUNA-8862 or www.pelagicoutfitters.com. Thank you, cats, for watching this week's episode of Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. Do me a favor, subscribe, like, all that crumb cake, all right? We are shadow banned on YouTube. You know why? Because of that. Because we love this. You know, isn't that terrible? That they just knock you and shallow ban you if you like that and you feel like uh, believe in God. It's pretty sad, isn't it? That uh, they did that. They did that on Twitter. They do all that stuff, all right? That's the evil that we're dealing with. But uh, there's a reckoning coming, all right? So stay strong. Love your country. Love God. Thanks for watching Kid Cochise Outdoors. Don't be ashamed of it. Till next time, we know where we're going. We're going to blow up a little bit. <laughs>